So then, we are back with more understandings from the Renewed Covenant, from the Aramaic English translation of the Word. This translation is from the very original documents from the Holy Prophets of Old, the Prophets of Israel, the Prophets of Yahweh. And we must understand the context of these documents, so then we understand the root. And we can align ourselves with the line from the Torah. There is no way for any nation in this world to take a step outside of the holy plan of Yahweh. So then these days where many people they come out and they try to speak and explain what they don't understand. It's absolutely putrid. There are so many people speaking what they don't understand. Scoundrelized documents. They don't understand how to read it. It's absolutely nonsense. These days where we find so many denominations, they are never coming together with the same understanding. And they preach the same scoundrelized Savior outside of the holy camps, outside of the holy tabernacles. Truly a waste of time. There are so many of these people speaking so much they don't understand it. Some of them, they speak so much, and then when they do, they don't understand what they are speaking of. Because they don't understand the Torah. From the time of the Torah, we understand the prophecies. Without the prophecies, we don't understand the Torah. Without the Torah, we don't understand the prophecies. They are always related. And the world then is exiting itself out of these falsified churches because they don't exist. And then when we understand then from the time of Moses the holy prophets they came because then the functions of the prophets were always to point the people back to the instructions. So how can you then listen to a person speaking of prophecy without pointing the people back to the instructions. Either a person is ignorant, and the true Yahweh, the true Creator, He is very merciful. So He never requests a person to give answers without having the proper understanding. So then, take this in consideration. Then, or a person is plain ignorant, or a person is retarded. Because there is no link outside of the Holy Torah for any person speaking of Torah understanding. You can't speak a half a Torah, half New Testament, and then speaking of a Messiah outside of the Holy Tabernacles. It doesn't make any sense. You must understand the Holy Documents for what they are. Because they speak of a Holy Yahweh. He created the heavens and the earth, and the sea, and the fish, and the birds of the air, and the universe, and the stars. He knows each of them by name. And there are some of these people speaking of the prophetic, they don't even understand what they are speaking of. Misleading thousands of people, and then including Iran, and then including Iraq, and the other countries, and then most of the time they are not even related with it. There are some of these countries they are going to come together friendships. They are going to make them friendships in order to link themselves with the final world's trade. Try to understand the context. The countries are not going to unify themselves during this time in terms of coming against Israel or then the holy cities. We are living a time of rebuilding. Where do you find people coming together for friendships and making trade ship and then going against another country? Where do you find these in the Holy Scripture? You won't find it. 
But then if you never taught the Torah properly, how are you going to understand it? So never again listen to these people that don't understand the Torah. Speaking of churches and junk and Mashiach outside of the Holy Tabernacles, what is this? This is junk. You don't listen to those people. If you don't hear then the word, proper name of Yahweh and then Yeshua, Yahweh is our Yeshua, you have to hear those words. He came from the Hebraic people. He came from the understanding of the first services of the Holy Tabernacle. At the time there were many of the services because they used to do many activities in the Holy Tabernacle. But speaking of the first time, the first era of the understandings of Moses would be the first service. Makes it simpler for us to understand. So then, Yahweh the Father was found in the Holy Tabernacle. And then Yahweh the Son would also be found in the Tabernacle. What is the problem? We can't deviate from these. No deviation. So then, from this point on, I begin to understand we are living a time of rebuilding. We must understand then the layers of the prophetic from the culture of the Hebrews. We want to understand then the end of times. So then we are in line with the Creator. That's the best way. So then we hear Moses. Then afterwards we hear the prophets. Always layers of understanding. So then we find layers in Ezekiel, we find in Zechariah, and then we find in Yerushiahu, we find then in Daniel. We are in a time of then the 38th chapter of Ezekiel, and then Daniel the 12th chapter, Yerushiahu the 61st chapter, and Zechariah the 12th chapter. If you begin to understand that these layer you find the time of rebuilding. It's not a time for war. It's not a time for drop bombs. It's not the time. The true Holy Hour is speaking and He is speaking of rebuilding. He spoke via His prophets. So we hear precisely what Yahweh is teaching us via His Holy Prophets. And no person in this earth takes the credit for it. These were already spoken, already given. But then sometimes Yahweh takes a person at least to direct them to the proper understanding of these layers already given. It's not a new layer. It's not a new understanding. Simply a person clarifying those layers and then linking up. So then we understand where we are at. In our country, USA has again made the wrong move. Now we are involved with Australia and you're having soldiers over there in Australia. For what reason? What is the reason behind it? Because our country wants to monitor then the advances of China. Do we find the West then in the Holy Scripture? Do we find words of Yahweh explaining then the West would go then and try to monitor the advances of the East? Do we find this? We don't find it. So what are we doing over there? What's the reason? Are we not trying to force ourselves as we then did in the past? Back then, 70 years ago, then we had a reason. 
the world war had ended and the world was in shambles. The war had terminated in China and terminated in Japan and then terminated in many other parts of the world. And then we had to take a stand to make sure that at least we would be doing trade as usual. But then we had industry back then, decent people and straight-minded people. But then at this moment, we are living at the time of the deceit has ended and we are transitioning ourselves into a new era. Seventy years ago, we were under the bondage of the deceit. We are no longer there. So what are we doing then in Australia? During this time of rebuilding, what is the reason for us to be in Australia for? Did not Yahweh speak through his prophets, speaking of the time of rebuilding? We find in Ezekiel, we find in Zechariah, we find in Yerushiahu. Do they not speak of rebuilding? What should we be doing? Rebuilding. The time of rebuilding. Because he has spoken through his Shaliaki Yohanan, he stayed in the very end when the East would be in charge, the third part of the ships. How do you deduce the third part of the ships? He's giving you a clue. He's speaking of government of the end doing trade. You won't find any portion in any part of this trade. These people in charge of the trade were East or China releasing a bomb. You won't find it. Try to read the directives from these East leading place where we know it's going to be Asia. Does Yahweh give us any indication that they are going to drop some bombs? You won't find it. Because it's a time of rebuilding. It's the very end of a government trade responsible in rebuilding. speaks, what does, gives us is the nations. They would gather themselves, they would rebuild themselves, and they would do trade with this new system. Try to understand. And then the nations that used to do trade with, the nations then, in order to do trade with, they have to prepare themselves, do they not? So each country to his own, and they have to rebuild. It's a time of rebuilding. Time of a renovation. So what are we doing then in Australia? We should be rebuilding ourselves. Because Yahweh does not speak of any countries of the West... Does he? He does not speak of any country of the West against this trade system of the East. Read the scripture. It's not time for U.S. to go out of our own country. It's time for us to rebuild.
Our foreign policies are obsolete. Yahweh has set the East already in motion with their own policies. The best for us is to retrieve ourselves and our foreign policies and let China take the lead. Because the while they are then taking the lead and establishing their tough diplomatic ways of doing trade brings peace in itself. Trades-wise, secularly speaking, not divinely speaking, secularly speaking, brings organization. Time of rebuild is not time of destruction. Why the nations are so then speaking of destroying each other for? It's not time of destruction. Did he not say through Shilimon, is a time to rebuild, and a time to destroy, a time to leave, a time to die, a time to mourn, and a time then to laugh? It's a time of rebuilding. And the starting point of this is absolutely sure. When Israel makes friendships with China, and they have a pathway over there to provide them, then it starts a whole new section of peace in the region. While then the second services of the Holy Tabernacles are also being rebuilt. And Yahweh has chosen a nation for the end of the trade of the world because they never waged the war. Only Yahweh can do this. There is no other nation that could be so powerful as China and never got involved in a war. So then we understand when they... Uh, Great prophet was speaking with the king of Babylon and he had his insanity time. Then he said, Yahweh he is in charge of the situations of the earth and of heaven. He was speaking of the leadership of the nations. As we understand, the king of Babylon, he went crazy for some time. And then he came back to his senses and he did understand, oh boy, Yahweh, he's in charge of heavens and the earth. He knows how to do trade in the earth also. So at the very precise moment that Israel makes friendship with China and makes a pathway for them to do trade, then peace in the secular understanding of the entire Middle East then comes to a stop. It's not a religious tie or religious friendship, it's a strictly trade. A hundred percent trade. No speaking of religion of any kind. And then the whole pathway is open for many countries to come to their senses and then helping their own people that are in dire straits. Iran, unfortunately, a lot of people over there that experience 100% inflation. That's not very fun. And then speaking of... Uh, Speaking of electricity, okay, those are uh, interesting speaking of, but then what about the people over there that don't have money to buy a sack of wheat? Because the understanding is where are we at in Yahweh's agenda? Time to rebuild. That's where we are at.
Our country is also spoken of in Revelation. But then that's further ahead. Yahweh's agenda states of time of rebuild. Rebuilding time. We understand it from the time of the prophecies, from the span of time given. As then Daniel, when he was then studying Yermiahu's Megillah. When he was studying Yermiahu's writings. He did understand that the 70 years, because Israel did not maintain the yearly Shabbat. Then the land had to rest for 70 years. So they went to captivity 70 years. When the time came, then Daniel was there studying Yermiahu's prophecy. And he did understand that the ending and the transitional time was about to take place. As we understand our time, we left the seat in 2009. And we understand the holy cities are returning. In a spirit. In a spirit. Speaking in a spirit. Then the actual cities are going to take place. But they are not going to mix themselves with the world system. However, leaders of the world they can come to the gates and ask and inquire of Yahweh. And they shall receive an answer. Does then the understanding of who is coming then with a glad report? Then they understand what it means. And then there is joy in the camp. The time of rebuilding. It's not time for war. So each country of this planet must understand the agenda of Yahweh. It's not time for war. Time of rebuilding. And some people, how do you know this time of rebuilding? That's very simple. How many days did the Messiah spend with Samaritans? We understand when the Messiah was speaking of the Holy Torah, it was not the Messiah, it was Yahweh, the Creator. So while Yahweh was completing then the spring feast, why did Yahweh then spend a couple days with Samaritans? Each day a thousand each. He was giving the rulership of the secular understanding to the Gentiles. He was giving them the leadership of the secular world. While he then was going to be in the holy tabernacles. Was in other words, okay, you can have your time, but if you have trouble, visit at the gates. And then the prophecies continued. Time of rebuilding. You must believe the prophets. Most importantly, we should do what the Messiah told us to do, obviously. But as per the time, the first thousand years we can read in Revelation. The first thousand years, His people would be in charge of heaven's understanding and directives. The other thousand, because of the destruction of the tomb, the world at that time made a declaration they did not want anything to do with the Messiah anymore. Thus, then Satan the destroyer destroyed the tomb. The very evidence that our Messiah came from the dead. Thus the first fruit of the dead then became the time of deceit. Teaching a Messiah outside of the Holy Tabernacles. Absolutely lunacy.
and then ended in 2009. And then from around 2008 to our time, knowledge has increased tremendously. Thus, Daniel, the 12th chapter. And then the question is, why do you think Yahweh then let the world acquire so much knowledge? Because he wants the world to rebuild. I've got enough knowledge that can you do on your own, then rebuild. This is the understanding of it. There is no other understanding that comes out of it. Then we understand. Daniel said, and then at the end, many people would go to and fro. To and fro, to and fro means confusion. That's what it means. To and fro, to and fro, to and fro. And then the other prophets, Zechariah, Ezekiel, and then Yerushiahu. What do they speak of? Rebuild. That's the plan. That's what the nations are going to do. They're going to come to their own understandings and they're going to make trade with China. This is what Yahweh has placed in motion. They're making partnership with a country very powerful and never waged a war. Let me ask you this. Why other person could come up with such a perfect idea? So then we are more aware of, of these end of times, we're in times of rebuild. Our presence in Australia makes no sense. Our presence in South China Sea, nonsense. In our presence in the Middle East, then should be reduced, as our president wisely is doing it. So then gives more open space for China to do precisely what the Yahweh has determined. Please stay tuned, much more coming up. Because then later we're going to understand more areas of revelation than and requires the understanding of the Torah. There are a lot of people they hear it, but then later other ideas come into their minds because they are not founded in the Torah. As we understand from the renewed covenant, we have then the understandings of the apostles and the prophets, the foundation of the apostles and prophets. What does it mean? From the perspective of the second service, then comes the Shilishim, and then the prophets previously, speaking of the second service and the first service. Both of them bearing testimony of the truth. 